everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Dorota. This is my uh, colleague Taher. I'm uh, Czech, he's uh, Syrian. And uh, we are here to introduce our project uh, Syria Czech. And um, uh, Syria Czech is a community of uh, Czechs and Syrian or generally Muslims that are living in Brno. And uh, you know, when I talk to my friends, uh, they always ask me, uh, like they always say, oh, so you're dealing with the Syrians. Or there is this other re re uh, reaction of, oh, so you're dealing with Syrians. Uh, so this uh, love-hate attitude is uh, for me very interesting, but it always follows the next, qu and the next questions how they are integrating. And for me, this is very interesting because I feel that our project contributes greatly to the integrations of everybody, of people in Brno, but we never talk or do integration work. Uh, I will explain later. <laughs> and now, uh, imagine ideally integrated a refugee or migrant. How is he like? Oh, uh, what does he do? Tell me. He drinks beer. He works. And they have friends. They have a lot of friends. Family. Maybe they speak Czech. Right? I don't know. Um, this is for me very interesting because this integration, when I usually ask people about this uh, integration process, they always tell me like all the things the foreigners should do in order to integrate. Like it's a one-way street. But uh, I think that this is a you know the core of the problem because it's not a one-way street it's mostly about the environment like the nourishing environment so it's like two-way relationship so integration is not only I as a foreigner need to do something but also there needs to be something in order for me to do certain things uh, now I would like to you to do an exercise it's called the thermometer and uh, when you agree or you say yes or you think a lot, uh, you do like this. And when you think it's uh, not or not at all or no, it's like this. Okay, and this is the scale. So if you say something a lot, you, say, uh, you point like this. When you say a little, you point like this. When you say it's something in the middle, you do like this, okay? So right now, I want you to think about like how much you concretely, you as a person, need help to feel uh, like to be integrated here in Brno. How much help do you need? Like here or here? Yeah? You, you see that for most of people it's not that much, right? It's usually here or it's below this average. Why? Uh, if you are in some kind of difficult situation, for example, you have filled in the uh, tax return, Daniel Přiznan, for the first time, or you needed a job, or you, you needed to um, move someplace, where do you turn? You turn to your family, you turn to your friends, you ask your friend, uh, friends on Facebook to recommend you something, right? So you have this net of people that are willing to help you. And uh, foreigners, especially uh, like um, migrants, refugees, as, uh, also migrants and refugees that are coming here, they oftentimes do not have this net. And uh, uh, this is uh, why they, or they net, do not know these kinds of uh, things. So, for example, their friends do not know that you need to fill in the tax return and how to do it. So uh, this is when the state and the NGO sectors comes in and then provide these kind of services. Assist you to, uh, assist foreigners to go to the doctor, 
uh, provide them with some language courses, da 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 da. Yeah? And these services cost money, they cost resources, and they, uh, they put you in this very unequal position of me as a savior, like, or the state or the NGO, and you poor foreigners being helped. You know, you need my help. And uh, it creates kind of dependency because this, this foreigner, <laughs> poor little guy needed to have a help, uh, then is uh, dependent on me as a great state or me as a great NGO saving this, uh, this person. And uh, this is uh, what we, we are actually trying to like, deconstruct in, uh, in Sireche. Uh, and how we do it? Uh, we create a community. So a uh, community is a space uh, where like, all of us are, are equal. We, like, the only thing that we do is to provide space for Czechs, Slovaks, and Syrians, or other Muslims, or other foreigners can meet, and they can exchange their views, they can have a nice conversation, they can make uh, new friends, etc., etc. Um, and uh, and so, so it's uh, not as a service, it's just a, a space where everybody can come, everybody can feel good, and, they, uh, and, uh, and then where also the magic happens. Because when you create this kind of space, you create this net that wasn't there before. And uh, when you create this net, then you create this kind of friendship or like relations between people that uh, usually wouldn't be there. And, uh, and then, then all the problems, uh, like we believe that all the problems will solve themselves. Because uh, like foreigners do not really need our help. They just need like this net of people, you know? Like your mom, your friend, your, your Facebook group, you know? Just, just this net that would uh, somehow like help them to to solve the issue. I, how did you get to know that here in Brno you need to pay a communal waste fee? How did you get to know this information? Otherwise, you will get fine. You know, like I didn't know. That told me. And this is this is how I I got to know. And this is how usually you get this sort of information. I think about the way you, you found, um, uh, like how, how do you uh, like go to parties? Usually somebody tells you, and this is how you go to a party, or how you find an apartment. Usually, like you post somewhere and then, uh, like, or you ask friends, right? So, so this is what we, we are trying to do to build this uh, relation, uh, relations uh, that do not have this like middle person that is this NGO or a state. And then uh, when the trust is built, uh, they can just turn to one another and the relationships are much more natural and um, it's much cheaper as well. So uh, right now I would uh, give the word to Tahir or to... Thank you very much, Dorota. Very much appreciated. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Tahir. I'm from Syria. I came three years ago to do my PhD in pharmacology here in Brno. When I joined the Syria Czech uh, organization, I loved the attitude they have, what they are doing, what they think to do. When they were trying to do the activities or the events, the attitude was to do activities where both sides involved. Not only Syrian doing something, or Czech doing something, but it was both sides. More particular, what I want to say is, we were doing events as regular or special events. Regular events, as you can see in the photo, it's in Ramadan three years ago. If you know Ramadan, please raise your hand. Amazing, amazing. 
In the picture, you can see a lot of food, delicious <laughs> food, and there is like us. That was in the beginning, and there was a lot few people coming. But we were very glad that the next years were more people coming. I will show you some more pictures and talk about it a little bit. One of the events also we were doing is not only Ramadan, because in Ramadan we give the space for Syrians, or also not only for Syrians, but for all Muslims, to have the chance to show their culture. And also we give the chance to check people to know other culture. But we also were celebrating, I hope the picture will come, <laughs> Christmas, where we give the Czech people the chance to share their culture and the way they do it, because we also have Christmas back then in Syria. But it was a very nice atmosphere, a friendly atmosphere, where everybody were trying to tell something and the other person were feeling. This is one of the hike in the nature we did between Czech and Syrians, and it was really amazing. We just told them, let's go to the hike. The Syrian doesn't know much about nature in Czech Republic, <laughs> let's say. And in that time, the Czech people felt very happy to show their nature, to talk a little bit. We have this tree, we have this flower, we make pesto, la la la. And it was very nice, even for me. Could we also make one picture? This event was participated by 200 people last December. The event called Syria as you won't see in media. We give the chance to Syrians to show their culture by giving small storytelling, also by providing some dancing, cultural dancing of Syria, and also by providing a lot of food. There was a lot of food. You can't imagine how food. And it was so delicious. Hummus, falafel, a lot of uh, meat, there was, uh, it's bad, but a lot of things, it was really nice. Can we also make up another picture? In this picture you can see where we are celebrating Christmas together. We don't only make some formal events. I don't, everybody would get bored if you just go sit like this now, just sitting listening, oh my god, it's so boring. We always try to do some activities, games, where everybody is involved. And in the picture you can see where we try to play this game when you draw and you need to guess. If you look in the picture, you can see a lot of kids. We always try to make our events kids friendly. Because if it's a family and you tell them, please don't bring the kids, they will not come. And that's how we are succeed. This is another picture of another Christmas event. Most likely our events is to build a community, to make bridges between the Syrian and the Czechs, and it's working, every event we are having more people, sometimes different people, everybody is inviting his friends. And I would really like to invite you for our next events when they will happen. This is all from my side, if you would like to say something, please. The microphone. So what we are actually doing is only to creating this net of people that um, I Czechs and Syrians can exchange whatever they like to exchange. Uh, they can make friendships and like based on, on this friendship. Because the integration for me, it's not something you do or something you, you are, but it's something that you feel. Like when you feel at home, this is for me a place when you're fully integrated. And this doesn't only apply to migrants or refugees, but also for you as Czechs. You know, maybe you come from, I come from Ostrava. You know, I also moved to, to Brno. And at the beginning, I, I was also feeling lost. So, so this feeling of being at home, this is for me the full integration that we are striving for. So uh, this is all from our side, if you have any questions or comments. Yes. 
I, I would like to ask about two things. Just um, uh, just this week, I think there was this um, excerpt of an interview with a journalist, uh, Pavla Jazairi, on, in, on Czech radio, and she was she was basically saying how angry she was at Czechs not willing, able, not 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 being able to welcome any any refugees, and she just couldn't understand it. And then, but then there was one point when she got really angry in the interview when when the when the journalist asked asked her. Uh, but in fact, you understand the situation because your husband is Muslim, and she said, "Come on, he's no Muslim. I mean, he's he's from Middle East." But I had to teach him basically Islam. He's a communist. You know, he 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 never knew something about this, uh, Islam. So I was I was thinking if you could say something about this, like when you were saying on one hand, well, we we're, we're trying to explain <clears throat> the Muslim culture, and on the other hand, the Czech culture. So I. I I would be interested if you also see it like in, in a more complicated way than than that. And then my second question is how how you deal with uh, issues of uh, everyday racism, how you how you discuss it amongst each other, and what do you do about it. Thank you for your questions. Um, I have been here three years. I am kind of restrict Muslim. I do Ramadan. I pray. I go to mosque. But the thing is, in my side, I don't look like a Muslim, do I? I don't have, maybe... They usually ask me, where is your this long, you know, shati, the beard, why, why you have ginger, uh, bossy, uh, beard, like, you know? How, how you come? <laughs> and the thing is, I don't look like a Muslim, but, I, but on the other side, when somebody wear hijabs, they usually get some you know, the side and the trunk, they never get like punched. It's, it's always by talking. What we, how we are dealing with it is by smiling back at the people. You just need to get it easy. The people I believe in the beginning, they are not used to see a lot of hijabs in Brno, for example. Because if you go to Prague, people are used to see it, I guess, or in other countries. So it will come by time. We need just to be patient. It's, that's, that's how we deal with it, to be honest. We don't like react too much. You don't need to do that. You just need to be nice. And then they will say, I was so angry at him. And then he was smiling back at me. How nice is that guy? And then he will break the stereotype. For your first question, I didn't really understood the first question. Maybe I, can, I, I mean the, the thing is that there is not like what I, what I meant is that there is not part one category of Muslims and there are very I mean there are people of different classes uh, of, of they come from different countries you can you talked about it a little bit and if, just to make another another example I uh, there's this book that I started reading recently that is about um, a, a person who came I think from Lebanon to Denmark in the 1970s he was not a Muslim. At that time, nobody looked at him as a Muslim. He was basically, and it was at the time also when there was, um, he was basically, he's very, very active in labor movement. He was much more interested, he was very interested in left politics. He never thought of himself as Muslim, as the prime identity. Um, so, so it was just uh, my, my question, like how, if you discuss this at all amongst each, each other, you know, like basically to problematize the, the category of, of Muslims, if, if, it's, if it's clear. But in general, I want to say I very much appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, I will just uh, quickly react on this, uh, because um, I o always have a feeling that if we put a label on people, uh, then, like for example, Muslim or Czech, then you always find examples that are confirming the stereotypes in your head. So if I put a label on a Muslim being rude or conservative or good or generous, you will always find examples that will fill the label. You know, you have <laughs> generous Muslims and Muslims who, who are not that generous as well as you have Czech people generous and Czech people that are not generous as much. And uh, what, uh, how are we respond to this everyday racism, as you were saying, is 
also to break those stereotypes, not only in the eyes of Czech people, but also in the sight of uh, foreigners. You know, like uh, when uh, there is a, there is a huge racism, especially like uh, against women wearing hijabs, which is this uh, kind of shawl. You know, there are no women. Uh, when you see women wearing this uh, burka or niqab, uh, they are usually uh, tourists. There are not that many people wearing this, right? So when when you see those people wearing hijabs, like they they get a lot of uh, discrimination or they get a lot of hate. You know, people pointing at them and screaming at them in Czech. Uh, so these people also need to see that there are different Czechs that are not like that and you know to break this label the same label as we have against them they have against us so this is also the way we deal with this uh, racism in in the way that it's not so direct it's not so intense but yeah we were uh, we were talking uh, we had a woman circle and then there was uh, this question brought up and we were thinking about how to address this issue. But this issue like, is, um, we were doing some workshops at schools, but you will need to, like, everybody has their own opinion. You know, some people wear, uh, consider wearing hijab as a, uh, as a kind of oppression, which it might be and might not be, according to the person. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, like we are trying to bridge this um, stereotype that all Czech people are racist and all Czech people hate Muslims and all people, all Czech people hate a uh, woman wearing hijab. Thank you. I'd like just to add that uh, what Marek was uh, saying it was somehow connected to what uh, Asma Abbas was uh, talking about last yesterday about identities that are. Um, created by others for us, yeah. So, for example, I sometimes don't perceive myself as a foreigner, and it's exactly the same thing with Muslims. I think we put the label of Muslims to everybody coming from the East, and they are not necessarily Muslims. <laughs> so it's interesting what, what he was trying to say. Any other questions? I uh, like the idea of smiling back at people. But maybe I would recommend you not to overdo it because you know uh, uh, Czechs don't smile, certainly not in public. So if you if you smile a lot at random strangers in the street, they will just think you're weird. So <laughs> maybe that's better than uh, uh, the opposite of just being unfriendly. Okay, this is not really a question, but thank you. But you smile now. <laughs> If you are fully integrated, you don't smile back, right? <laughs> what I wanted to say is only in the situations when you get racist or discriminated, I just smile back. I, in the beginning when I came, I was smiling a lot, but then I get to know it that I need to reduce my smile a little bit. <laughs> but then I have to smile again. It's just my way and I really like it. I mean, sometimes, yeah, you get this weird, but then in the end they smile. <laughs> Any more questions, please? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm just curious uh, if uh, on your events and your community are involved also other Muslims or Arabs from other countries, or if it's more like a Czech student community and other Muslims or Arabs from different countries, countries uh, don't feel really like involved or that they could belong there. Thank you so much because this is the uh, question that we were trying to tackle. That uh, the the name of the community is Syrie which is like Syrian and Czech, but it also sounds like Syrie like the Olomoutsky Syrie which is something very typical for Czech uh, Republic, I think. And we were trying to convey this message that you know. Syrians and Czech together is something very typical for Czech Republic. Uh, yeah, but uh, we were think, uh, lately we were thinking that uh, it shouldn't be only for Syrians. And 
uh, lately we have been inviting um, um, like Muslims general, uh, foreigners generally, uh, or anybody actually anybody who wants to come and uh, to to make it uh, more open. But uh, uh, usually, how how people get to us is uh, like a snowball effect. So somebody knows somebody, and he will invite somebody that knows somebody that will uh, invite somebody. This is also how we get Czech people or Slovaks. That uh, friend of the friend invite a friend because he was there and it was great. So uh, yeah, the event is open, but it's been open for only I don't know. We've been working on this issue for maybe last year, and we see that uh, like this is uh, this is an issue. Uh, so Do we have other people? yeah, yeah, we uh, we have Egypt Egyptians we we have uh, Palestinians, we have uh, Indians, we have Ukrainians, huh? Indonesians, we had also some Tunisians, Slovak, Bosnian and Herzegovina, uh, Moldovia. Moldovia. <laughs> Moldovia. Yeah, uh, so, so different nationality come, uh, we do not want to exclude anybody. I really recommend uh, attending their events. They always have excellent food. I think food is um, very, a very nice way how to invite people to come to your events and kind of deconstruct stereotypes about uh, foreigners, Muslims, whatever, Syrians. Food is in the center <laughs> of everything. And uh, you know like how beautiful conversation revolves around food, you wouldn't believe. Because uh, like Czech people, they like good food, but they cannot really say like it tastes like this, it tastes like that. But Syrian people, they, they have like ten different tastes for everything. So we only have two tastes, I think, good and bad. And they have like this is like this, and this is a little bit sour, sweet sour, and then sweet something sweet spicy and for me that was like eye-opening that you can have so much conversation about food any more questions um i don't know about the time how it's going yeah the time is about like um we don't have so much time for questions <laughs> uh, because the our next presenters are already here um, anyway, please feel free to continue the discussion with Dorotka and her like uh, after the presentation or during the break. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>